Hello, 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 Transurfer and the Transurfing Curious. My name is Renee Garcia, y'all, and this is Transurfing TV. And today on Transurfing TV, drunk as fuck. <laughs> oh boy, I'm actually a tad bit nervous to do this video because I'll be honest, I have been a bad girl <laughs> in my past which is what chapter two is about in my book a tale of practical reality transurfing by me and lucy coltrera um i go into some parts about my past to show vividly and in a very practical way how pendulums can hurt you, really hurt you, how they can help you if you understand how to use pendulums and you have a solid intention. And um, the way in which I tell my story or what it is that I talk about specifically is probably going to shock a lot of people. And or just kind of be like, I think some of the test readers just didn't know what to think <laughs> when they read it. But um, this is actually part of what it is that I want not only the chapter of the book to teach, but also this video. And that is that in defying standards, there's a lot to gain there, a lot to gain, not only for me, but which I will also extend to you. And I know that seems a little bit ambiguous, so let me just say this, and then I will get on to what this video is going to actually be about. And then at the end of the video, <laughs> second half of the video, I'm gonna talk about atoning a little bit or what doing this chapter, what I reveal about myself and my life in this chapter, what this has done for me as a process, as a writer, and as somebody that's, you know, in it to take accountability. And it's been pretty extreme, I have to admit, but I'll get into that part towards the second half of this video. So the standards that I'm breaking here in creating this video, in telling my story, is that, first of all, the part of my story that's gonna have all the salacious details, all the nitty gritty, this is something that I felt, I have felt for a long time, didn't have any place in what I'm doing right now in the trans surfing community. That there are essentially two different distinct, two different very distinct versions of me. <laughs> the me I am now, who is a line doer soul frail, who is creative in positive ways, who wants to help other people, who wants to live a life that is free of naughty pendulums. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I do this a little bit when I get nervous. Um, and then that prior version of me, which again is gonna shock some people, very, very different than who I am today. And I felt for a while that these two versions of me couldn't really be one in this transurfing endeavor. So then as I'm starting the process of writing the book, I realize that the best 
display that I can possibly come up with in relaying practically the concept of pendulums and how this concept either helps you or hurts you in your reality creation process, I'm like, damn, I got to bring it and actually talk about this stuff. So in talking about it, I'm defying the standards that I perceived my role as a trans-serving, whatever you want to call me, a trans-serving instructor. I don't really like that anymore. I'm just a trans-server that's trying to help other people that are challenged to understand how to practically apply these concepts. But this role that I'm now finding myself in, I'm realizing that defying the standards of, you know, <laughs> being a thought leader in a particular space that can only sort of give off some vibe or illusion of being, you know, walking, a, a, a straight path and all that kind of stuff. I have to actually defy the standards in order to teach you all what and how powerful pendulums can be and how they can like either make or break you, right? So I'm gonna be very honest, very raw in not only this video, but in chapter two. Um, if you do opt in and the link is below in the comments and then in the description, we ask that you please not share any pictures. We have included some <laughs> pictures <laughs> to uh, <laughs> back my story up because it is a little, it is a little bit shocking. It's a little bit hard to read and hard to believe even. And even me looking back, which is what I'll talk about after I go through what I teach on pendulums in the chapter, looking back on my life in the way that I just did, running through old pictures and videos so we could find some things to put into the PDF to sort of like really bring it. You know, this has been <laughs> very shocking to me, this version of me now seeing those old ways old ways in which I operated and the process of reconciling the two, doing a little bit of shadow work and merging those two parts of me, not only so I can benefit now, but also extend to you some ways in which you can benefit, right? So this is all going to make sense as I move through this video. So this, um, this video, drunk as fuck. <laughs> This is what it really has to do with. I mean, it also has to do with the fact that I was like drunk as fuck in a lot of my past <laughs> life. Um, but really what it's about is it's about us being drunk on pendulums. And I think this has been probably the most noteworthy point that I'm pulling from this whole experience writing the the book, writing this chapter, bringing my story in a very raw and honest way where I'm not holding back anything, but like going into the story and looking at it and looking at the old pictures, the old videos, writing about the ways in which I operated and all the shady crap that I did and me now sort of like being in awe. Oh my God, I can't believe you actually did that stuff. Oh my God, I can't believe you were actually like that. The reason that I'm realizing that there is such awe and shock is because I was drunk on pendulums at the time. I was lost in a maze of, you know, debauchery <laughs> and chaos and drug and alcohol induced, you know, states and all kinds of stuff, pendulums that were on me. I was living in Los Angeles, you know, my, the beginning of chapter two, I'm still in Paris and this is when it's going rapidly downhill very fast. And I wind up in the hospital and then I am back in LA and I'm, you know, rocking all this stuff that I felt I needed to rock at the time in order to 
materialize my intention and was I successful in what I was doing? Yeah, I was totally successful, but I was still drunk on pendulums. I was still not living the frail of my soul. I was still adhering to standards that pendulums set around me. I was still distracted by pendulums. I was still feeding things that weren't intended for me with a ton of thought energy and action. And again, you know, I, I think I stated this in the beginning of the video, it's like you create your own reality or the pendulums in your reality create it for you. And if you get, if you get super sucked away from your soul frail and you are, because as I'm working through this knowledge and really like getting into this book and writing it and really dissecting practically all the reality transserving concepts, I'm realizing that the soul frail and pendulums are the polarized version of each other. Being dialed to the frail of your soul is you being tuned away from pendulums that don't serve you. You being tuned to pendulums that don't serve you means you're not dialed to the frail of your soul. So I'm looking back on myself from this new position of optimal soul frail state and I'm seeing myself and I'm like, what the fuck? How did I do that? How did I act like that? How did I maintain that? You know, <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff. And really what it comes down to is I was drunk off pendulums to the extent that I wasn't aware of myself. I wasn't aware of a version of reality that was good for me. I was just kind of, I was pendulum food and I was drunk on pendulums. So we get drunk on pendulums to varying degrees in a lot of different ways. But what I wanna to touch on in this video today is the three ways in which pendulums intoxicate us to the extent that we lose sight of so much. We lose sight of, again, our soul frail. We lose sight of intentions that are intended for us as individuals. We lose sight of, what's good for us. We lose sight of our, our power as reality creators. Pendulums, and I have learned this more so than anything else, pendulums are masters at creating this illusion that you actually don't have that much power, hold that much power, that you are powerless. And a lot of people in this community I know a lot of people in the Facebook group are still struggling like every day. I don't get it. You know, I'm still having a problem with these pendulums in my life and I'm still not seeing results. And this is the truth of the matter, at least from my layer of reality, pendulums have convinced you that. So once pendulums have, if this is you, right? So once pendulums have convinced you that you are powerless, that things are the way that they are, that you don't hold the ability to change your direction. And if you missed that last video, definitely go and check it out, how to take a new direction or choose a new script. And this is exactly what pendulums do, is convince us of our inability to do just that. And when you do finally, you know, decide that you are going to fucking, you know, take the bull by the horns and address your pendulums, manage your pendulums, renegotiate with your pendulums, really get in there and dissect exactly what the pendulums are in your reality and what business you're doing with them, what they're giving to you, what they're taking from you. And you decide to just like redo that whole thing, then that's when reality creation starts. So it's kind of interesting. Reality transurfing is a one-two punch and this I have absolutely realized my time doing this. You have two parts of transurfing. You have first understanding, calling out and managing your pendulums. Without doing this, you don't obtain the energy or the attention 
or the ability to take the rest of the concepts and use them to start creating your own reality, right? Just as much as if you really get in there and manage your pendulums, but you don't have the concepts then to create your reality after that, you're not gonna go anywhere either. This is what Vadim Zeeland refers to as the suspended state. So you need both. You need to understand the concepts and how they help you to create your reality. And then you need to manage the fuck out of your pendulums so you can take back your energy, then using the concepts along with that energy to create your own reality. So the three ways in which pendulums hinder you or completely take away your ability at creating your own reality. One, distraction, right? Distraction is <laughs> everywhere. It is everywhere. Attention is the number one commodity of everything. That's why the media, social media, you know, relationships, everything in your reality is vying for your attention and your energy and trying to distract you from yourself because once you are focused solely on yourself and you take back your attention to fuel your own endeavors, pendulums don't get it anymore. So pe the pendulums in our environment are always seeking to distract us. So in the chapter, and I'm not gonna give away a ton of the stuff in there, because I want you know everyone that's gonna opt in to obviously benefit from stuff I'm not talking about here on the channel, but one of the things that I ask in the chapter is, you know, ask yourself, is this pendulum looking to distract me? And if so, if I am distracted and my attention is on this pendulum, does it harm what it is that I want to do for myself and my layer of reality. So the perfect example, obviously, is media, social media, politics, all that crap. Does it harm you and take you away from creating your own reality? Fuck yeah, it does. Absolutely. So calling out anything that's distracting you, and I know a lot of people, again, are convinced, like, oh, I've got to pay attention to this. I've got to pay attention to that. No, you don't. You actually don't. I mean, there are certain things that you got to pay attention to, like kids. But other than that and your job, but even that's, you know, <laughs> up for negotiation. You can do anything you want. If you're not living the life that you want today, you are most likely distracted by pendulums that are bleeding you out of your energy and you don't have it then to create your own reality. So the second way that pendulums take you away from creating your own reality. Standards. In my opinion, standards are actually more destructive than distraction. Standards seek to confine us, so our actions are limited in nature, keeping us in a little box of conformity so we continue to feed pendulums. And I talk about this extensively in this chapter because, and maybe some of you, you know, that have followed me know this, and for those of you that don't, I have one year of high school. <laughs> I'm completely uneducated. I didn't go to college. I didn't, you know, <laughs> I, I don't have a typical, you know, a typical education that would have provided me skills. Now I've learned to do stuff. Obviously, I've, you know, to survive in this world, especially successfully, I've had to um, learn to do maths, <laughs> learn to write a book. <laughs> um, but my success, and I know this isn't for everyone, but this has been the case for me. My success has stemmed from me defying standards. 
There are, and I talk about this in the book a lot, and for those of you that are gonna value from this information, I break it down like extensively. There's two ways going about being successful. You either adhere to all the standards that the pendulum set to a T, like everything, 100%, or you defy them all. And when you defy them all, you begin, so this is kind of, um, you know, like another one-two punch, certain things begin to happen. When you actively start defying pendulums, your attention begins to open up to new sectors of reality because standards are ultimately scripts. And when you're adhering to these scripts, you miss a lot. There are a lot of cracks, and I have this in the glossary that's also available for those that opt in, a new, a new de transurfing definition, cracks in the matrix. So cracks in the matrix are things that become visible to you once you have sort of seen <laughs> scripts and standards for what they are, and you begin kind of doing your own thing. And when you start doing your own thing and you're more focused on the quickest ways for you to materialize your intentions, this is how you gain success more rapidly than other people that are going about achieving success in conventional ways in the environment. And this has been the key to my success. I'm defying standards, I'm defying odds, I'm an anomaly, and really I attribute everything that I have today to defying standards as they have set, been set before me. And me talking about my story <laughs> in the way that I have being very open, not lying about anything, <laughs> not leaving anything out. I'm totally getting in there. You can see exactly how me defying the standards set me up for some pretty optimal success. So the third way in which pendulums inhibit us or deter us entirely from achieving our intentions or creating our own reality is by affecting our frequency. So this is an insight that came to me in creating this chapter that I sort of already knew, but I saw it even more vividly in writing this chapter. And that is that once a pendulum has hooked you and I very much call into my mind my story of where it is that I have been and the things that I've done and the pendulums that I was in business with that helped me to act in certain ways and all this stuff. And I can look back on that part of my life and see it from a little bit of a distance now. I mean, this some of this stuff is 10, 15 years old, so I've got quite a bit of distance and I can look back and I see what happened was the pendulum adjusted my frequency and in the pendulum adjusting my frequency, I just automatically started thinking things like that, acting in those ways and reinforcing all of that stuff in my environment that kept me at that base frequency. I mean, that's really the best way to describe it. So it's in the frequency that the pendulums actually, and the standards as well, but it's in the frequency that the pendulums create your reality for you because that frequency causes you to think and act in specific ways, which then highlights that sector of reality. This is exactly how it works. So once you have acknowledged how 
that pendulum is distracting you, um, presenting to you standards in which it's asking you, you know, to adhere to conditions, roles, um, modes of operation, sense of duty, all these things that society sort of uses to get us to adhere to a certain set of behavioral standards and ways of thinking and all that stuff, once you really begin <laughs> to see that and then see how that is adjusting or affecting your frequency and then you it's like and i've used this analogy so many times but it's so true it's like an old television that you had to turn the dial to um you know really bring the picture in clear this is what the pendulum is having its adherence do tuned to that frequency so that sector of reality is highlighted. So this is how this is how pendulums materialize intentions is they get their adherence to conform, they distract, they set standards and they affect the frequency of the adherence. And then those adherents are tuned in, they're channeling their thought energy, their actions and that frequency to that intention that the pendulum has initiated and it's with this energy that that intention materializes for the pendulum right so the perfect example of that is what's happened with um the cooties virus in the last two years right everybody tuned in everybody acted everybody did all this stuff that the pendulum set up, we all sort of got involved in one way or another and adhered, conformed to standards. And then sure enough, that intention of, you know, a fucking globalized pandemic kicked off and still two years up and running. So this is kind of where it's at. Once you can see, and again, I go into this so deep in my chapter two and then also align my personal story practically with how all of this plays out because abstract theory right this is reality transferring steps one through five a bunch of abstract theory bringing it down to you as an individual and your layer of reality and how pendulums are either helping you or hurting you in creating your own reality this is, this is where it's at. You've got to take the bull by the horns, take the helm of the wheel, take control of the ship first, and then use this stuff to start creating. So distractions, standards, and frequency. That's where it's at. Ask yourself today, if you aren't living the reality you want to live, you aren't happy, you aren't experiencing the version of reality you want, what, or maybe all three of these are causing you to tune your frequency to a pendulum that is then creating your reality for you. So now for the juicy stuff. <laughs> oh boy, my atonement. <laughs> I went down the fucking rabbit hole. <laughs> oh my God. I went down the rabbit hole in a big way doing this chapter. I wrote the chapter and I was kind of like, yeah, this is pretty crazy. Like I, once I realized that I was going to tell my story, you know, it's pretty crazy to put stuff out there publicly. But again, I feel that it's the right time and not only did I benefit from this in so many ways, I'm hoping that, you know, my intention is that you benefit if you need to hear any of this. So it felt right. And again, me not talking about this prior was me just conforming to standards that pendulums have set, that thought leaders or spiritual 
guides or whatever it is that you want to call me. I really don't like any of those labels, by the way. They all feel very, very strange. But um, a person in my position, I was adhering to the standards that we're not supposed to talk about this stuff. And now I'm just like, no, I'm going to talk about it because it needs to be talked about and it's going to actually create some value for me and other people. Um, one of the things that I realized is that going through, so going through all these, we, when we wrote the chapter out and we decided we're going to include pictures, I went through um, a bunch of old hard drives with lots of photos and videos and I spent like three days going through this stuff. <gasps> oh my God. There were times where I was certain I was just going to fucking puke because I was I couldn't, I couldn't, it was like my brain was not able to understand the difference between this version of me now and this prior version of me and again I attribute this just like when you get super drunk right and you do a bunch of crazy stuff like you go out to a bar one night you get super drunk you do a bunch of crazy stuff and then you wake up the next morning you've got no clue where you are what you did and then it sort of all starts getting pieced back together well this is how this has been for me I know the stuff that I did. I mean, obviously I wrote about it and it's part of my life. I don't hide it. You know, people, the people in my real life, they know about it. It's not like I keep any of this a secret or anything like that. I'm not in total denial, but the videos and the photos was like, I went back to that life track. <laughs> I mean, there were some pretty epic videos where I was doing some stuff. I mean, lots of really cool stuff, sailing boats and <laughs> actually sailing and having this really epic adventure and epic life. But then there was also a lot of extremely shady, be shady behavior and shitty behavior <laughs> that I saw and I was just like, oh my God, I almost couldn't watch sometimes and it started to rattle me and it rattled me in a way that I haven't been rattled in a long time where I started to feel some guilt and shame and, and I really do believe that it had to do with me sort of like putting myself back on that life track. And then I thought to myself, God, this is how you actually felt when you were doing this shit. I went back. I, 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 <laughs> like the Dean's book forward to this, forward to the past. This was backward to the past. This is, this was like ass backward <laughs> to the past. It was, it was horrible. And I spun out. I went into this like wormhole, like I fell into this rabbit hole of just, you know, feeling all these old things that I haven't felt in a long time and seeing my way, my, these ways in which I've operated and hearing my voice saying and talking specific ways. And I was just like, oh my God. And I actually got kind of quiet here at home. And my partner was like, dude, you've been, you've been quiet the last few days, which is kind of <laughs> rare for me. And I just, I was honest. I was like, dude, I'm fucking tripping out. And he was like, well, what are you tripping out about exactly? And I'm like, I just can't believe that I've been there and I've done that. <laughs> and um, this brings me to something that I feel you are absolutely going to benefit from. If you're struggling with anything you need to reconcile from your past, or you're still feeling guilt about something, or you're still feeling shame about something, or, you know, maybe you were in an abusive relationship and you still hold it against yourself that you allowed that to happen or you abuse somebody or you had problems with drugs and alcohol and you think back on that prior version of yourself and you're embarrassed for your behaviors or whatever it is, whatever crappy thing, 
stands out to you about past behaviors, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe you guys don't have it as bad as I do. <laughs> but if you, if you have something, the point I'd like to make is this. That story surrounding that thing, an event, a state of being, a way of operating, a past version of you, a life track, whatever, that story surrounding that thing, if you're retelling that story to yourself, that is a pendulum in of itself that could be in subtle ways continuing to create a reality for you. This is you being attached to anything that's not serving you or your intentions starting today that's from your past. Or maybe it's even something that you're doing right now, right? So in the writing process, this old story, this old way of, and let me just preface by saying, in the spirit of transurfing, I've really repitched my story to myself. And Lucy and I talked about this extensively, my co-writer, that when you are writing an actual story, you have to choose a narrative. You, there's lots of different ways in which you could look at how something played out, right? You can see things from different angles. You can um, ha have a different perspective on it over time. Since you've gained some new knowledge, you can view it in one way at one point and then at another point just be like, oh my God, I, I can't believe I used to see it that way or whatever. But like when you're writing a story, you have to choose the perspective in which you're going to tell that story. And I told my story from an absolute place of empowerment. I did take control. I had very little. I had, you know, I had no education. I had no means to survive. So I needed to take control of the situation. And I used what I had available to me at the time to level up in my layer of reality. And this is the, this is the narrative that I chose to relay my story to those that are interested in it. Now, I also understand looking back on my prior story, on this prior part of my life, this life track, that even deep, deep down inside, there has been a little bit of shame or guilt that hasn't been dealt with, hasn't necessarily been nurtured in a positive way, I maybe have been in denial. That's why looking back and sort of putting myself back into that life track, videos and pictures, I was shocked because I have kept that part of me away because I wanted to evolve into the higher version of myself. But Everything, just as I talk about in the chapter, everything comes due at a certain point. All the checks and balances eventually come due. If you do the right thing and you reconcile that ledger, then you have the ability to level up even more or you kind of do what I do and just keep it tucked away and not deal with it. But in me actually dealing with it, I feel a tremendous sense of liberty in this moment and a little bit more weightless, even though I didn't even know it was really there, you know? So, and then I'm also taking it and, and spinning that lead into gold for myself and my layer of reality, and then hopefully also yours. It's incorporating however small that little part of your shadow self, calling that little part out, come here, it's okay, right? It's okay. 
and nurturing that part of you, nurturing that part of your story and using it to fuel your personal evolution. And in my case, to maybe help others with theirs, right? So um, what I'm walking away with after doing this back to the drunk as fuck thing. Okay, I'm taking my I'm taking accountability. I absolutely am taking accountability. I was shitty. I was shady. I was rocking lower self quite a bit and my layer of reality materialized exactly how one would think it would in the presence of that version of me, those behaviors, that frequency, all that pendulum stuff. I'm taking accountability. I'm not trying to divert accountability here at all. But the one little caveat to that is I was asleep. I was asleep in a lot of areas of my life. I was a snail fucking responding to my environment. Oh. Uh, they're saying that I need to be like this in order for me to get these things. And uh, I gotta, oh, I gotta have the, I gotta have a BMW. I've got, you know, all this kind of stuff. I was a snail responding to a bunch of standards and all this crap, but I was a little bit asleep. So I didn't necessarily know you don't have the, um, you don't have the luxury of being say of saying that right now if you're watching this video because i'm trying to wake everybody up to it now so like there is no more sleepiness just um going along with the standards and all this stuff like this is the ultimate act of account accountability if you choose for it to be that for yourself but ultimately in the end i can kind of say and this is somewhat in jest but it's a little bit true is the pendulums made me do it <laughs> the pendulums made me do it the pendulums i got drunk i got drunk off of the pendulums and i did a lot of the things that i saw other people doing because i was you know I was I was inebri inebriated is that the right word intoxicated by a bunch of the stuff that pendulums give us as you know <laughs> prizes and I was right in there in the mix throwing punches responding like a snail playing the games I was at the same time creating my own standards and rules for success. But, and this will really play out in the later chapters of the book, it wasn't until I really started to dial to the frail of my soul that I understood, yeah, I was a powerful person and I was able to achieve success. And I got, I got my one up, but was it really good for me at the end of the day? I mean, I'm standing here today and I'm using it all as fuel. So I'll let you kind of be the judge of that. But like, you know, I was powerful and lost. And this brings me to the final point I wanna make as I wrap this up, because I know this is kind of a, a long video, is getting back to the narrative of your story, looking back, Let's take the most shameful thing you've ever done. <laughs> We're all about keeping it real here at Transurban TV. Okay, let's, let's, let's take you back to the most shameful thing that you have ever done and look at that thing and ask yourself, what is that, what is that story that surrounds that thing, right? What is the story that surrounds that thing? And how many times have you told yourself this story is there a new story that you could begin to tell yourself in exchange for the old one? And for me, I mean, this has been the absolute meat on the bone in my experience of writing this book and doing this thing and 
putting myself out there to the world to the extent that I am in hopes that it helps someone that understands what it is I'm trying to spit at y'all and get out to the world. But like I got caught up in a, you know, I got caught up in a pendulum of feeling as though my story was my story and there was one perspective to it. Looking back on my life retrospectively now, especially this time of my life, and especially when I started to feel guilt and shame about my past actions and modus operandi and ways in which I operated, all that kind of stuff, and I started to feel that game and shame and guilt about it. And then I stopped myself and I was like, wait a second, that's only one angle. The other angle is you did take the bull by the horns. You did do what you needed to do. You did take control. The other angle is I was coming out of a very, very desperate and low place. I had no money. I came out of a five-year abusive marriage. I was I was a woman that had no skills, no direction, no um, anything and had been beaten down by life, you know, a history of abuse and sexual abuse and all kinds of, you know, all kinds of dysfunction and coping with drugs and alcohol and then finding myself in an abusive marriage that exploded, imploded the way that it had. I was traumatized. So was I acting out some of that trauma? Sure. So what story was it? Was I traumatized coming out of a place of dysfunction? Was I acting shamefully in ways in which were shady and shadowy? Was I doing something empowering and taking the bull by the horns and taking control of my life? Which one was it? It was all of them. It was all of them. You don't have to choose. You can choose if it's positive, right? To the extent that you're not denying your lower self or your shadow self, because that part of you needs to be nurtured too, because there is gifts and rewards there, but it can be everything. It doesn't have to be just one thing. There's evidence to support all theories. And this bit of knowledge is powerful in not only you creating the reality that you want today, because you are able to look at yourself and your past in a way, in a in narrating it in a way that's going to be empowering to you, but you can also go easy on yourself and invite that shadow or lower version of yourself into your current layer of reality because that version of you can help you in some ways too now right now so this is it this is i mean i'm like i am a fucking native american spirit in me right now using every last bit of the animal right i am using every last bit of that hunted game I'm not discarding anything. I'm taking it all and I'm extracting from it what I need in order for me to continue on with my reality creation process in a real and powerful way. And I can honestly say that in me going back and looking at all the stuff that I just looked at, and some of you guys are going to be fucking totally shocked when you read this chapter or listen to the audio and there's pictures you're gonna be like holy fuck who is this chick but in me doing this and revealing this and being open and honest not only to the world but also to myself i can honestly say today that i'm at my highest level of reality that i have ever been it was like i took that guilt and shame and i used it like a springboard to get myself just a little bit higher and it works. And this is advanced transurfing. This is stuff that 99.9% .9 of the population probably doesn't know that they have the ability to do. And maybe even if they did, would be too chicken shit <laughs> to actually do it. So in the chapter, there is the audiobook, the PDF, the new glossary, there's also homework, 
that I am going to ask you to do exactly what I just did and do a breakdown of every pendulum in your life, how it's affecting you, what it's taking from you, what it's giving to you. And it's gonna be a powerful exercise and I actually give you my own personal worksheet so you can see my examples and then go about doing your own because again, this is where it starts. You aren't able to take the rest of the reality transferring concepts and use them to start creating your own reality if you have not managed your pendulums, you know, first. So this is kind of where it's at. So I'm going to wrap this video up because fuck, I've been talking for 50 minutes and um, I hope you enjoy the chapter. If you don't opt into it, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's bring all conversations to the secret book club on the chapter itself. And thank you guys so much for allowing me this opportunity. And also quickly, and I know I didn't do this, I wanted to do it in the original, in the beginning of the video, um, thanks to my team who's been supportive, non-judgmental, Tirza, Shanta supporting me, my God, Lucy, all the moderators, everyone that has helped me in this project that I know what I was talking about was like super shocking and nobody, I got no vibes of anybody passing judgment on me. So I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you all on the next round. Peace guys, bye.